Good morning guys. Today I will um, show you how I leave my orchids unattended for so long when I'm in vacation. I will not hire an um, orchid seater but I do put them under the sprinkler. So this is how it usually looks. Like I will gather them around including the other um, potted plants that I have that I'd like to um, see alive when I come back for vacation like this table right here um, that's a group of the ancidiums that used to be underneath the old swing out there in the back yeah I just like uh, put them in there as long as they get water they get watered when I'm away they're alive and I'm good with that there's the cymbidium there and the tall um, dendrobium in there behind this um, zucchinis inside the cucumbers and the pea peas snap peas yeah the group of that one in there and behind this one there's um, a table of um, mixed orchids mostly uh, the nobilis there there are some cats and uh, swan orchids and it's just a mixture of orchids that still in there never move them but the water sprinkler can reach them in there and there are also a group of orchids right there in the corner of the pergola and over there as well yeah and I have some hanging baskets there of orchids and in the top of the hot tub there's like a um, palinopsis in there species and the uh, hybrid and then over here is the basket of the dendrobium nobilis yeah and this beautiful dahlias in here and a seedling of my um, I started from seed um, Bangkok or no also known as um, desert rose here yeah, and also a denium that one is my like casti it has a new baby yeah put in there and I move the other symbidiums here and inside um right there that's um big um fire pit and that's also a group of orchids in there mostly the vandacious are in there and that's flowering right there is the begonia from the front side of the house it was hanging before and I put in the top of the fire pit so they'll be good in it they're, they're perfect for the sprinkler and they're just around right here and that's the sprinkler guys that one right there yeah it could water all these orchids around here and some of the the berries the berry bed the berries um, garden bed over there in that cage right there it can reach in there as well and some of the, the background plants yep and also I have the hanging baskets right there of orchids two large ones and then there's a cymbidiums in there and in there and a uh, nobly dendrobium and my big um, catatante is in there behind it because there's um container large containers in there that I put also orchids behind so just around guys and I got some young plants right there that's uh, bell peppers and I got my uh, spaghetti squash right there climbing in my blueberry and it just in here guys it's just gathering around my citrus still in the front I use um that kind of method in the citrus right there like um there's a little um what do you call it like it's a some kind of like a drip irrigation thing came from that bottle 
I just fill it with water and it will just drip. Yeah, guys. This is the way I leave my orchids unattended while I'm away for a longer time. I use a sprinkler around them. I don't hire an orchid sitter. I just do this myself. And um, this one's already, they're already acclimated. Acclimated to the climate, but I'm still worried a little bit when it's hot because I did not have um, um, shade cloth right here. I put the shade cloth in top of the pergola, but this one here, it's not sunny all the time because of the large trees in the background like that. They cast shadow in the afternoon. Yeah. And usually I have a suck, I mean, mostly I have always come back home with 100% um, like um, good result in my um, method like this. The only casualty that I have sometimes are the orchids, the one that the squirrel um, attacked, you know, like the squirrel like the pseudobulb of my um, dragon flower like also on my coriantis the bucket orchids it's just like those one they like to um chew on the sometimes the nobili cane they like to chew on the cane so the only uh bad thing leaving him alone without attendance is the is the um, squirrel i don't know squirrel just being mean and while um and while I was transfer, uh, transferring the orchid yesterday, and I've also cleaned this, the the old leaves from the trees and stuff like that, like in the creases of the plant, I noticed some spikes on some of my ancidium. Look at this, guys. That's a brand new spike. Yeah, I have not noticed that one on my um, tour um, last week, I guess. Look at this. That's a spike. On this insidium, oh, and this insidium, I did not even notice this yesterday, only today. Now that I'm here with my camera, look at that, guys. Another spike. This one I noticed this yesterday from my spider orchid. This one is always, always giving me spikes. Look at that. And it, this one is also fast grower, too. Um, I think when I came back from, um, from the Philippines, it's gonna be like uh, already forming lots of buds. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And look at this, guys. The plastic, my hubby didn't wanna uncover this table in here because it has a um, rototailer underneath this table, and there's um also um what's that called the uh, the mower underneath in this glass table. So he didn't want to remove it. But look at this, guys. When I moved this yesterday, they just started slouching in there. And one, one broke off. Yeah. That's my catatante. You know. But there's just a lot of flowers. Those are the orchids that I put in there. And I also noticed um, she, uh, my cat Leah in there had a sheath. And another Catlia over there had a couple of sheath, and also that Iwanagara apple blossom right there in the hanging basket. It also had a sheath coming, so I'm very excited about my orchids this uh, in the summer. Yeah, this orchids here, orchid everywhere. This is a pomegranate. It looks so nice and healthy color now though. Now that it's got acclimated. Because this one, when it's cold, it turned yellow. I mean, the cold, I mean, the leaves will just um, come off and turn yellow. And now it's very healthy green. It's nice. And this is the, look at this. This is the one that I um, cut off from the mother plant. Look at this, guys. It has the, that two new growth right there. And the original one died right there. But it's a mix of stuff in here, guys. This is how I leave my orchid alone. 
but this is only for summertime. In the winter, I don't do this because it's gonna be so cold, everything sleeping here outside. So I'll just choose not to go on the long vacation during um, winter months because I cannot leave them alone with a sprinkler outside. The semi hydro, I don't worry about those because there's always um, water in the reservoir before I leave. They're still inside the house, but the one that can this one is in the bark medium, like this beautiful here. There's beauty orange um, butterfly, they're all outside. Okay, the guys, it just started to open. See, this one is not straight yet, and this one right here, they are outside. Yeah. So, this is my method of leaving them without um, me being worried about them constantly. Yeah, I'm just hoping that the squirrel will leave them alone this time. That's all I'm asking, you know. Yeah, see the guys, the fire pit is like uh, loaded with orchids and the begonia. Wow, guys. And underneath that avocado right there, guys. Underneath the avocado, it has my um, semi high some of the semi hydro um, phalaenopsis, and that's that's the baby nobilis. Yeah, unbelievable. There's, there's a lot of plants in here, guys. But anyway, this is how I leave my orchid alone while I'm vacationing. For a long time only for summertime outdoor growing yeah okay guys thank you for watching bye